Hello Mathletes, if you would get out your foldable, we are going to add a new tab, our last tab, to our foldable. Now, as I'm going through this video, you may find it necessary to pause it and rewind it to get caught up, and that's okay. So, here we go. This last tab is going to be called Translating and linearizing exponential and log functions like that. Once you have that, we'll open up the tab and what we're going to do in the bottom tab we're going to divide this in half and we're going to leave that for tomorrow and we are going to go up into the top half and this is going to be titled transforming exponential functions to linear functions using logarithms. Now, we know an exponential function looks like y equals a b to the x. And if we were to graph on an x and a y coordinate system, the exponential would look like this and this point would be at x equals 0 and y equals a. Okay, that's all review. So here is the transformation. We are going to begin by applying the log functions to both sides of the equation. Like this. The next step is that we are going to use the log properties to expand the right side of the equation. So I'm going to rewrite the left side, log y equals. Now let's use the multiplication property. If we have a log of two numbers multiplied, it's the same as the log of the first number plus the log of the second number, like so. And then, if we have the log of something to a power, we can move that power out in front. So log y equals log a plus x times log B. Now I am going to rearrange these things. I am going to, um, you know when you have like 3 plus 7 is the same as 7 plus 3? 
we're just going to change the position of these things. So log y equals x times log b plus log a. And then when we were going to switch the positions of the x and the log b, this would be the same as if you had 3 times 5, it's the same as 5 times 3. So we now end up with log y equals log b times x plus log a. Now this right here is the transformation from exponential to linear. And you may ask, this doesn't look linear to me, but I would propose to you that this looks like y equals m x plus b. And if we were going to graph this on an x-axis and we change the y-axis to a log y-axis, we would see that this becomes linear like that. And this point will be at x equals 0 and what happens when you put a 0 in here? Well log b times 0 is 0, that goes away and so when x is 0 log y equals log a. And so here's the tricky part, this is the hardest part to understand on these graphs the x-axis remains x but the y-axis changes from a y to a log y and you can see what happens to the intercept, the y-intercept is that the x value stays 0 and the y value goes from a to log a so basically what we've done is we've applied a log function to the, the y values and it straightens the exponential into linear like so. Alright, so that's part one. Part two is a demonstration of how this works because in theory it's hard to see but it helps to have a real example. So you should have one of these papers that says transform exponential functions to linear functions using logarithms. And this example is all about USB memory. Now I'm sure that at some point you've all had a USB memory deal like this, a thumb drive perhaps, and these are really quite amazing devices. The one that I have right here is 8 gigabytes, which is really quite small by today's standards when you can get a terabyte of information on one of these. But here's what's interesting. In you know, you think about one gigabyte of storage. That's really not much these days. In fact, like I said, this is eight gigabytes. Back when I was in high school in the Stone Age and computers were just starting to become available for, uh, you know, people like us, lay people, not government workers, um, a price of gigabyte of memory was $300,000.
And then you can see that almost 10 years later it dropped to 10 and then 4 years uh, to 1,000 by 2,000 and by 2012, 10 cents a gigabyte. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put this information into our calculator and see if this is if this data is exponential. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start if you have your calculator out in your sheet, we're going to start by pressing the stat button and doing the edit and <coughs> Excuse me, we're going to put the dates and the dollars in the L1 and the L2. So go ahead and do that. 1981, thousand and ten cents and I missed something hmm three hundred thousand thousand oh, I forgot the ten ten and point one there we go now what I'd like you to do is a couple things press the y equals button and make sure all your equations are clear and if you have any of these plots turned on turn them off so you can go up get them flashing press enter and turn them off okay now let's do an exponential regression we're going to go stat and we want to go sideways to edit or to calculate and then we're going to go down to number 10 or number 0 exponential regression and depending on if you have a newer or an older calculator, you're going to do a little different. But I'm going to go down here and I'm going to calculate. And I get an error. And see how it says overflow? What happens is um, the numbers are too big for the calculator. And the problem numbers are the dates. And so we need to change those dates into something smaller. And here's how we're going to do it. If you go, actually, what we're going to do is our dates are in L1. So if you look at the button number 1, right above it, it says L1. We're going to do second 1. And we're going to subtract from it 1981. So we're going to subtract 1981 from every number in our list. And then find the button right above on that says STO arrow. And we're going to store those numbers. That's what STO means. We're going to store those back in list number one like this. So you can press enter. And then if you press the stat button and go into edit, you can see that list one instead of being the actual year we could consider this as being how many years after 1981 now press stat go sideways to calculate go down to zero do the exponential regression and you should get an equation and <coughs> what you'll notice is that the A value and the B value, you should write those down so let's see, I'm just going to scrawl it in here Y equals 431064 times the B value which is 0 0.605 to the X and then if you'll notice that the R value is negative 0.99 um, the fact that it's very close to the number 1 means that this is a very good equation and it's negative so it's going downwards <coughs> alright so let's go to y equals and let's put our equation in so 4 3 1 0 6 4 times 0 0.605 parentheses to the power x so you want to do that 
and then we're going to go to the stat plot second y equals number one we want to turn turn it on and make sure your X list and your Y list is L1 and L2 then you can do a zoom and you can do a number nine a zoom stat press the enter <coughs> and you'll see the data points and you'll see the exponential function graphed and so you can see that we have a very good approximation all right so at this point let's see if we can turn this into a linear equation and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take the log of all the y values okay let me show you how we're going to do it you want to go log and then we're going to go second two to get the L2 and we're going to close the parentheses and then we're going to press the STO button and we're going to store that back in list number two so that's the command that you want and you can press enter Okay. And now what we're going to do is go into stat edit and you can see that the x values changed but the y values now have been our logs. Okay? So let's go back into stat. Let's go sideways to calculate and now let's do a linear regression number 4, ax plus b. and we should get an equation that looks like y equals negative 0.218x plus 5.635 and let's go ahead to y equals let's clear our exponential equation and put in our linear negative 0.218x plus 5.635 we already have the plot turned on so you can go zoom and zoom stat and there's the data and there's the line and you can see that it's trending downward, it's linear, and um, it appears that we have linearized the exponential data.